let's get into this last segment of the show, which I think is really interesting. It's a, a pretty good segue that you had there for us, Ed, just in relation to China taking over everything and how all of that actually works. And you know, I, I called this the enemy within, and, and this is the reason. So former Harvard U- University professor Charles Lieber, this fella on the screen, has been sentenced to six months of house arrest, which seems like pretty lame, after being arrested and convicted of lying about his ties to a China-run recruitment program. Lieber, a renowned nanoscientist and a former chairman of Harvard's chemistry department, no less, had been charged with failing to disclose funding he allegedly received from the Chinese government for his research and falsely denying his participation in the Thousand Talents program. So this is how the Chinese go away and scoop up all of the intellectual property from around the world, is they simply recruit these high-level people and they pay them a lot of money. The program was a Chinese recruitment drive aimed at attracting foreign researchers to share their knowledge with the country. Lieber's conviction was seen as a key victory for US prosecutors pursuing cases under the Chinese initiative, which was a Trump era campaign launched in 2018 to counter Chinese economic espionage and research theft. However, the initiative faced criticism for fueling bias, can you believe it, against Asians, can you believe it, and chilling research. In February 2022, the Justice Department under the Biden administration ended the program, but it said it would continue pursuing cases related to national security and the threats posed by China. The Lieber case is just one example of growing scrutiny over research collaborations between U.S. academics and China as Washington seeks to protect American research and innovation from foreign influence. The U.S. has accused China of intellectual property theft and efforts to acquire sensitive technology through espionage and cyber attacks. The controversy has led to new restrictions on academic collaborations with China, including the Department of Education's recent termination of a program that funded Chinese language and cultural programs at American universities, also here in Australian universities, otherwise known as the Confucius Institutes. Now, these people are absolute ratbags going around the world, stealing our intellectual property when there's other ways to go about it. There's other ways to build partnerships. There's other ways to build relationships. You don't have to coerce people into actually espionage and corporate and industrial espionage to try and acquire the information that you've got. And you know what? History proves history proves to us that China are actually not very good at it. There was a, and I'll, I'll cite a military example because that's the one that I kind of can think of at the moment that comes to the forefront of my mind. The Chinese uh, purchased, I think it was an Su-30, a Sukhoi Su-30 from the Russians and so they bought the aircraft and they were testing the aircraft in their air force. And the intention was, and the idea was that the Chinese were going to build those Sukhoi jets under license in China. But before that went ahead, what the Chinese attempted to do was to reverse engineer all of the Russian technology. And then the deal folded at the last minute. So they had, they had the aircraft, they tried to reverse engineer it. And then the Russians said, all right, it's time to actually sign the contract. Do you want to build these things under license? And do you want to, how do you want to proceed? What do you want to do? And the Chinese went, no, 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 we're good. And they tried to reverse engineer the technology, but it didn't work because they couldn't reverse engineer the engine technology that the Russians had created that went into those aircraft. So that's actually been the biggest failing that the Chinese have had with their air force and, um, and their airborne forces they're unable to reverse engineer what we've got so what they do is instead of trying to do that they just suck up all of the data everything they're just sucking up everything and they're letting the algorithms and the artificial intelligence actually put that together so even though chinese theft and coercion is massive and rampant around every country in the world because they're trying to acquire all of these things it actually doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting any further or progressing and there's a lot of evidence to point that them stealing everything actually has no bearing on markets or has an impact on a market. The point of me sharing that story with you is, if you don't know, the unspoken truth is that there's somewhere in your city right now where there's either a Chinese police station, a Confucius Institute of some sort, and people that are from mainland China are agents of the Chinese Communist Party. Not all of them, but if the CCP come knocking on your door and you're a citizen of China, they're knocking on your door and they go, oi, I expect you to do this. 
meaning I expect you to spy on behalf of the CCP. If you don't do it, they'll use your family as coercion to actually make it happen. It's well documented and well known, and that is the unspoken truth. People don't like to talk about that or politicians don't like to say that out aloud because it's too inflammatory and it's too politically sensitive. It's a hot potato that no one wants to talk about it. But it is the unspoken truth. Ed, what do you think, mate? Yeah, boy, well, I, I, nothing to argue about there. You know, the um, a lot of this is our own fault. We let things get away. I mean, uh, you, know, you got to give them credit in, in one sense. Is, Absolutely. Is, yeah. is, is they push and they push. See, what can we get, what can we get away with? Now, surely they wouldn't go for that. Let's try it anyway. And they get away with it. And we let them keep doing stuff and doing stuff. Hey, let's float a, a balloon over the country and kind of <laughs> stuff. And, and, uh, <laughs> let's see how many we can get away with. And, uh, you know, finally, uh, after balloon 2000, you know, after they've collected all sorts of sensitive data, they're, they're probably looking at each other saying, I can't believe we got away with. 2,000 balloons <laughs> before they did anything, you know, and you know, I mean, uh, here at the University of Minnesota, we have a large contingent of Chinese students, a lot of them working in the engineering. These guys don't come over here to study English lit, okay? They come over here, they're, they're, they're in the sciences. They're in the, yeah, they're the best engineers in the world, man. Uh, yeah, and, and they, you know, they're the best, they're the best IT people mm -hmm. in the world. They have incredible stuff because they're trained by the best people in the world at your universities, for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they uh, so and and we don't say boo about it, and, it, and we closed down uh, one of those Confucius sites in Kansas City, I believe. All right, so it's a token. That's one. Okay, so we have like probably a thousand more to go. That that <laughs> you know we have we have uh, you know the citizens in a little town outside of Detroit um, at a recent town hall were up in arms because the government gave a license uh, to a Chinese company. To build lithium batteries uh, in this little town outside of Detroit, so, there aren't there aren't any American companies who will build lith lithium batteries here, mm. and and they were speaking truth to power. So, so they didn't want that Chinese Communist Party building a multi-billion-dollar plant in their backyard uh, to build, uh, you know, uh, high-tech batteries. So, I mean, but this is what we're doing. I mean, how much of our farmland now, I forget what the number is. I think it's like 30% of the U.S. farmland is owned by the Chinese. So the, um, ter the term that um, was used by Peter Zion in the book that I, I was reading before, the, uh, the Jim Ricketts one, he calls it Chinese hyperfinance. So they're a hyperfinanced economy. So the reason that you don't have a lithium battery plant in the States there, first of all, it's government red tape. That's the first thing. Like to try and stand something up like that is just like so difficult. But then the resources that you need to actually build that are extraordinary. You probably need like a hundred million dollars to build something like that. But you know, in the CCP, in the Chinese Communist Party and their government, there's a member of the CCP in every company. There's the the Chinese commissar, if you like, that's the way you you term it, that resides inside of that business. And so the entrepreneurs like me and you are like, hey, let's we've got all the cobalt that we dug out of the ground with the slaves in uh, in the Congo. So we're getting we've got slave labor and everybody wants these batteries. Let's put the slave labor to good work. And the Chinese commissar says, aha, great idea. I like the idea of that. How much money did it? I need one hundred million dollars to build the plant. All right. No worries. Goes to the Chinese Treasury, gets the money sent across. There you go. There is no red tape. There's no right. red tape at all. The Chinese commissars are the ones that are plugged directly into the government. And, you know, it's a, it's a, the way you describe that is a public private partnership in the West. That's how we describe it, where the, the government works hand in hand with a, with a private company, sometimes a public company as well, but public private partnership is the way you describe it. And in Germany in the 1930s and 40s, it was other, otherwise known as fascism. Yeah. Public private partnerships is fascism. But when you have centralized control, then you have communism. But you don't have centralized control necessarily of these companies in China. You have the Chinese commissar that's in there in the fascist version of it with hyper finance back in them where they're able to come and buy all your farmland to start these factories to do these things. And the worst part about it is they import all their labor. They don't even employ local people. Here in the Southwest Pacific in the Solomon Islands in Fiji, there's a bunch of buildings that they're building, you know, the, the Chinese coming in and the government saying, yeah, good idea. You want to build a building? Go for it. You want to buy the land office? Go for it. But then they don't supply any jobs. 
And then they have these security details that stand outside these buildings for anybody filming. They come away, come out and chew you away and they're really aggressive about it all like that as well. It'd be different if they actually gave locals jobs and they stimulate economies that way. For sure, they definitely do do that. But the vast majority of their workforces are imported like that. Confucius Institutes and this Thousand Talents program is something that is very, very real. And it's part of their unrestricted warfare program. That's how they go around getting people to be coerced. And it's easy to coerce somebody in authority by saying, hey, I'm going to pay you $500,000 if you do this for me. And that guy got paid a lot of money. He had to, he actually had to pay a tax bill of $33,600 or something like that because he collected all this money in a Chinese bank account. And yeah, it's un unbelievable. But you know, you want to sell your soul, you're selling it out to the devil. That's up to you and you will pay the consequences and you'll, you will reap the rewards of what you sow. And you know, unfortunately, we can't impose harsh penalties on someone like that, but um, at least he was penalized and it was publicized and his career is ruined, hopefully, because of it. Well, you know, World War III does not have to look like World War II. You know, it, no. it, is, it doesn't have to be. Should, uh, you know, you and I have been arguing, we have been in World War III already for a while. For a while, and, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and we are feeling the effects. Um, but most people still don't seem to be aware, you know, that about what's going on. They don't really know that there's an, an attack on the U.S. dollar, and they don't really know that there's um, a worldwide effort. And you know, and it's not just China, by the way. China has been, well, they've been making relationships. Listen, say what you say about China, what you want about China, but they've been, you know, developing relationships at the same time, and we've been abusing them. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of the stuff we have ourselves to blame for. So I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for a state department, you know, personnel, you know, saying, oh, this is terrible. What the Chinese are doing. Well, you know, yeah. You know what? This holds up the mirror a little bit. A, a lot of this is, is self-inflicted and yeah. uh, a lot, I think half of it is stupidity and half of it is agenda driven. Um, we have a global organized effort to reshape the world. Uh, and those marching orders that, that come down, they affect everything. And so people are making decisions not based on the best interest of our, of our country, but according to that particular agenda. And uh, so I'll get off that particular high horse. And hey, I, here, come down I, off your high horse, will you, pal? <laughs> it's time to go and get a cup of coffee. Come on down. Come all the way down, will you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. Yeah. Well, Ed, once again, thank you so much for dialing into the call today. And we had a couple of technical challenges there, but we've overcome them. Well, I think we've sorted out the problem, which is really good. So no more interruptions to our streams or our feeds. So the quality of that will improve. If you're using StreamYard, ladies and gentlemen, don't use a VPN while you're using it. That <laughs> seems to be the problem and it's worked Oops. perfectly since okay. you turned that off. Yeah. So we're all good there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you've seen on today's show, make sure you reach out to us. You can leave a comment below. We'd love to see some engagement down there. Let us know your thoughts on these important topics we'd love to know what's going on as my watch alarm is going off so that's what time normal people get up right at seven o'clock <laughs> here i am at four o'clock in the morning bringing this show to you <laughs> commitment to the cause it is what it is folks don't forget you can tune into the podcast and you can tune into the show via spotify so just search for unspoken truth on spotify you can find us over there and don't forget to follow us on twitter telegram and rumble as well and we use those as our primary secondary and tertiary backups in the event that we get censored or cancelled over here on YouTube. And you want to make sure that you've got some of this knowledge in your ears every day. Ed, thanks so much for joining us. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show. See you, mate. It's bye for now. See you, buddy. Give me all your time tonight. Promise I'm going to make it right. We don't got to talk too much. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Dressed up in suit